Okay, let's talk about how to work with square roots. So you can take a look at our problem here. We have three square root of 20 plus seven square root of five all over square root of two times the square root of three. But in mathematics, this symbol here, most of us would say, oh, that's the square root symbol, and you wouldn't be incorrect. However, uh, the kind of more broader, more accurate way to describe this symbol is what we call a radical. Okay, so if you're taking any sort of math class, especially like algebra, if you look in your textbook, uh, you'll probably have a chapter or a unit that says radical expressions, radical equations. So we're talking about working with expressions and uh, various you know numbers with this symbol. So here, although these are square roots, you can have like the cube root of numbers or uh, things with variables as well. But we're just gonna go ahead and keep it nice and simple and work with square roots. So we can just kind of cover some really important kind of fundamental concepts with working with square roots. And um, again, if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. So we're gonna get to the solution in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. And I can tell you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, but it requires three things. And I'm speaking to those of you especially that struggle in math, okay? You can be great at math, but you need three things. One, you have to have the desire to want to learn math. So if you don't want to learn math, it's going to be tough being great at math. The second thing you need is encouragement, okay? You need a great teacher or some sort of mentor, some sort of coach to, like, you know, pick you up when you're falling down. And the third thing, the most important thing you need is great math instruction. You know, math instruction that you understand, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the SAT, ACT, GED, ASVAB, Teacher Certification Exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well, but it's important that you take your own awesome math notes. It's really, really important to be successful in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. All right, so three square root of 20 plus uh, seven square root of five all over square root of two times the square root of three is equal to 13 times the square root of 30 over six. Now, I should have been clear about something. What I was saying here, this problem is without using a calculator. So if you went into your calculator and you actually took the square roots and got decimal values and everything else, you probably have a fairly, you know, I'm kind of assuming you probably have somewhat of a decimal approximation of this answer, but that's not what we're trying to do. So um, anyways, uh, uh, I was remiss for not making that clear. Okay, you definitely don't want to use a calculator. Uh, only use it when you're kind of told to use it, right? When we're dealing with things like radicals and square roots, you know, you're not using your calculator, you're using that supercomputer in between your ears, but this is the answer. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let me go ahead and reward you with a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into what's going on here. And this is kind of just stand back for a second. We're going to have to figure out how to add square roots, and then we're going to have to figure out how to multiply square roots in doing these two operations are completely different. And then, of course, lastly, we're going to have to learn how to divide square roots because we're going to get some sort of answer over here, and then we're going to divide it by this answer down here. So there's a couple different issues that we want to cover here in this problem, and that's why I created the problem. Uh, hopefully, it's not too difficult. I wanted to kind of make it just right, okay? Not too cold, not too hot, just right. So uh, we can kind of review some really important concepts about square roots. All right, so let's go ahead and focus first on the numerator. So we want to figure out 3 square root of 20 plus 7 square root of 5. We want to go ahead and simplify that. So how do we add uh, square root expressions? Well, I'm going to show you this right now. Okay. All right, so 3 square root of 20 plus 7 square root of 5. The main thing that you want to know is that you want to try to simplify the or, uh, your square roots. So here, the square root of 20 
plus the square root of 5. I can't do anything with these two expressions as they are. So if you can, uh, if you're trying to add or subtract square root expressions, let's kind of make something up. If I had 3 square root of 7 plus 2 square root of 7, here I can add these up. I can add these numbers up right here because these are uh, square roots of 7. So the answer would be 5 square root of 7. Okay, so it's this is very much like like terms in algebra. Okay, kind of think of it this way: if I had three x plus two x, my answer here is five x. I think that's a kind of good way to think of it. So when you're adding and subtracting square roots, you can only do so if, in fact, you have the exact same square root, the exact same number, exact same radical. It has to be perfectly 100% the same. Okay, and if it is the same, you can basically effectively add or subtract the respective coefficients, the numbers in front of that. Okay, but right here, when I'm looking at this problem, uh, three square root of 20 plus seven square root of five, I'm like, oh, okay, I got 20 here, I got five here, so I can't do anything about it. Well, not so quick, not so quick. What we want to do is simplify our square roots. Okay, this is a key skill. So how do you simplify a square root? It's kind of like reducing a fraction in some sort of way. We can rewrite this in a simpler way, but what we want to be on the lookout is for things called perfect square factors. Okay, so what is a perfect square? Let me go ahead and show you these numbers right now. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Now, what's, you know, what do these numbers have in common? Well, these are perfect square factors. When I take the square root of these numbers, like 4, I get 2. When I take the square root of 9, I get 3. I take the square root of 16, I get 4. You get the idea. So you want to be on the lookout for these numbers, okay? And, of course, there's an infinite amount of them. These are perfect squared factors. And you want to be looking at these square roots, and you want to be like, hey, does this number underneath this square root have any factors that are perfect squared factors? Because if it does we can simplify this. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to do that now. All right. So we can write the square root of 20 as 2 times 10, but that's not going to help me out. Uh, I can think of 20 as 2 times 10, 2 times 10 or 1 times 20, obviously. But if I think of uh, 20 as 4 times 5, I'm like, oh, 4. I'm on the lookout for these perfect square factors. Oh, 4 is a perfect square factor. So this is going to come in nice and handy right here. So we have 3 times the square root of 20, but I'm thinking of 20 as 4 times 5. And here is a rule of square roots, okay? The square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. You can pull apart uh, these two um, uh, factors here into their own little nice individual square roots. So instead of writing this as 3 times the square root of 4 times 5, I can write this as 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and this is going to have tremendous benefit for us here because, because we could take the square root of 4, it's going to be 2, okay? So let's go ahead and see how this works. So here, obviously, 7 square root of 5, there's nothing there, so I'm just going to write that. But this is really important that you understand. You have to be on the lookout uh, for these perfect square factors. All right, so we can write this as 3 square root of 4 times square root of 5. The square root of 4 is what? It is 2. Always just work with the principal square root, which is the positive value of your square root. So we have 3 times 2 times the square root of 5 now. Look at this. I got a square root of 5 and a square root of 5. So this is going to be a, a nice little opportunity to add these two square roots. So 3 times 2, which is, of course, 6. So we have 6 square root of 5 plus 7 square root of 5. This is uh, We can add these because we have square root of 5s. So this is going to be 13 square root of 5. Okay, so that might be like a little problem in and of itself. And basically, the way I kind of designed this problem is so we can kind of review different uh, concepts. So the first two concepts that we kind of reviewed is, one, how to simplify a square root, and two, how to add square roots. So now let's move on to our next phase of our problem. All right, so our numerator, we had to kind of go through a little bit of a cleanup, but we figured out that it was equal to 13 square root of 5, so now let's talk about the denominator. So here we have uh, square root of 2 times the square root of 3. How do we handle multiplication of square roots? Well, let's go ahead and deal with that right now. 
super easy. Okay, just as you have the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b, basically that's the rule that's saying the product, okay, of these factors, you can write as in their own individual square roots. Well, you can also write individual square roots under one big square root, okay? So you kind of think of the rule backwards. So instead of a square root of 2 times a square root of 3, I could just uh, uh, choose to write this as one big square root 2 times 3, which is, of course, is, uh, of course going to be the square root of 6. So here now is our final uh, answer, okay? But not so quick. So if some of you got to this point right here, this was your answer, okay, not the answer that I gave, well, I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice, uh, I'm going to give you a happy face, okay, and yeah, that check mark, I'll give you a couple check marks. We're not going to give you an A plus or anything like that, but I would give you a solid B plus. That's pretty good work. However, we have a problem right here, okay, and this is a problem, and let's go to discuss that problem right now. Okay, so when you're working with square roots and radicals, one thing you cannot have in your final answer is a square root, okay? What we call an irrational number. Something like if you have like a square root of 4 in your denominator, just go ahead and take the square root of that, and that is 2. But here, the square root of 6, if you do this in your calculator, you're going to get some sort of decimal, right? Well, this is not allowed. You cannot have your um, a square root left in the denominator as a final answer. This type of number is what we call an irrational number. Irrational number, it's not rational, right? So some of you are saying, what does that mean? Well, an irrational number is something like the number pi. Okay, pi is an example, a very famous uh, example of an irrational number. So pi is approximately equal to 3.14. And hopefully you guys are familiar with pi. Uh, of course, this is the number we use when we're dealing with circles. 3.14, and I'm not quite sure of the other digits. I think it's like 1, 5, da, 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 da. Well, it goes on and on and on and on and on. It goes all the way into infinity. But here's the deal. This number, the digits of pi, do not repeat. And uh, they don't repeat. In other words, it's not like 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2. This is what we call a repeating decimal. This doesn't repeat, and it doesn't um, terminate. So I have to go way out here to infinity. I just don't have that kind of time. I don't know about you, but I don't have infinity to figure out what all the digits of pi are. So this is impossible for us to list all these digits. We can write a lot of them out, but not all of them out. So we just go ahead and give this number a nice, lovely uh, symbol like that that represents all these digits. That's what we call an irrational number. Same thing with the square root of 6. If you go into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal, but it's going to go on forever. So conceptually speaking, you can't divide a number by a number that never ends. Okay, It just doesn't make sense. So that's why in uh, mathematics, we don't leave our final answers with an irrational number in the uh, denominator. Okay, So like right here, we have the square root of 6. you got to recognize, oh, irrational number, I have to do something. And you can see what I'm doing is what you need to learn, and that's called rationalizing. Okay, We need to rationalize the denominator. So how do we get rid of this without breaking this actual value? Okay, well, I'm going to show you this right now. Super easy, not that difficult. What we're going to do, whatever your square root here is, like here we have the square root of 6, we're simply going to multiply the denominator by this, uh, this same number, the square root of 6, and the numerator by the square root of 6. Because the square root of 6 uh, divided by the square root of 6 is what? Anything divided by itself is 1. So really, we're just taking this number right here and multiplying it by a big old 1. 1 times anything is just itself. So we're not harming the radical. We're not doing anything you know, mean to it. We're just kind of manipulating numbers so we can kind of get rid of this square root in the denominator. Okay. And now we remember, we already know how to multiply square roots. So let's go ahead and clean this up. So uh, the denominator is going to be the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. Remember... I can uh, write that as this, square root of 6 times this, square root of 6. That's equal to one big square root, or 6 times 6, which is equal to the square root of 36, which, of course, is 6. Okay, so that's what our denominator is. And then we have the square root of 6 times the square root of 5, which, of course, would be the square root of 30 times 13. Now, you can take a quick look at 30 and just think of those perfect squared factors. You're like, oh, yeah, you're not going to get a 4 or 9 or anything else into a 30, so you're kind of good to go right there. Okay, so we covered a lot of different skills, not um, everything, but a good amount.
when it comes to square roots and radicals. So, you know, if you are struggling with this, you know, what you need to do is kind of start from the very beginning. One, you know, get the terminology down, what a square root is, what a radical is, how to simplify square roots, etc. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, suggest a couple of courses. Probably my Algebra 1 course would be a good starting point for most of you out there. But I also have additional uh, YouTube videos on this topic as well. But here's the deal. Uh, make sure you practice this. You know, you watching this video, if you're like, oh, I get this, I, I understand. Well, that's great, okay? But you can't truly, you know, absorb all this unless you practice, okay? Practicing uh, mathematics is critical. You know, you can't become a great basketball player by watching TV, right? So you're like, oh, if I watch the best basketball players nonstop, that means I'll get good at, <laughs> at playing basketball. doesn't work that way, right? You actually have to go do the work. And math is no different. So make sure you follow up by practicing. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.